Hey, what's what up? up? So we're back again. <laughs> so this is episode Hi. episode five. Wow, episode five. Episode five of our emotional journey. If you um and so anyway, so this is episode five, and if you have not had an opportunity to check out the previous episodes, definitely would encourage you all and start from the beginning because it it literally is documenting kind of our journey on this emotional development and stuff. And for those of you who are watching on Instagram, just go to look up Noble Gibbons on Facebook. Uh, there, it's all in his profile. That's where all the videos are housed, so you can find it all there. And and they're all public, uh, you know, so you guys will be able to see all the different episodes and stuff. But I, I'd recommend going back through, so that way it'll give you context to you know what we're sharing and stuff. Right. And it'll it'll kind of make make the you know each um, episode make more sense when you kind of see the whole yes. the whole big picture here. And just know we are not like professionals. We're not psychologists. Yeah. We're not counselors. We're not trainers. We're just sharing our journey and sharing some things that we're learning, what it's looking like for us, how it's helping us. It's been amazing to get feedback from you guys on what has been helpful, how it's resonating with you, and how you're seeing yourself in some of these things. And I know several of you have already uh, gotten the book, which is awesome. So yeah, if you've already got the book, in fact, give me a hashtag, I got the book. Um, because I'm curious, uh, for those of you who have, what that, what you guys think of it. And just so you guys know, the book that we're referencing, that a lot of this is coming from, is this one right here. It's called Running on Empty by Dr. Janice Webb. Um, Highly recommend awesome. it. Yeah. And that's one of a number of resources Several. that we've used and that we're using to help us on our on our own journey. If you've seen some of the previous episodes, uh, put hashtag and then the number of the episode that you have seen. So if you've seen episode one, put hashtag one. If you've seen episode one, two, and three, do hashtag one through three, just to kind of give us an idea again of if you guys have seen some of the previous episodes. Yeah. So today we wanted to talk about, in the book, she actually mentions 10 different ways that, um, 10 different ways that people end up with as an adult if they have had emotional neglect as a child. And understand, emotional neglect does not necessarily mean something bad happened to you. It could, because I mean, there's just stuff that happens in people's life, but emotional neglect what that means is that means that there were certain things that didn't happen for you. Maybe it didn't happen in your household, it didn't happen in your family, or it wasn't enough of it anyways for what you needed emotionally. And so can, therefore you kind of grow up with a hole um, emotionally. And it tends to show up in many different ways once you're an adult. And so check this out. So here's my disclaimer. <laughs> disclaimer is... I, I love my family. I love my, yes. my dad, love my mom, my sister. Um, so We both had great families yeah. growing up. We so, really, truly did. So I want to emphasize that. that and, and honestly, we probably had a leave it to beaver childhood. Probably. We're probably in the, in the small minority. So, But here's check this out. Here's what's crazy. So even though we had a leave it to beaver childhood, very small minority of people in the, in the globe that probably had a leave it to beaver childhood, even that we still left our childhood with some childhood emotional neglect. And, and both sets of our parents loved us. Like, like you know, we, we knew that our folks loved us, all that kind of stuff. But again, there's no parent that's perfect. Even us, we're super intentional parents. Nobody's perfect, right? We all have junk in our trunk. We all have more issues in Time Magazine is what it feels like. And, what it, and, and another thing that I, that I say is that, you know, just some of the executive coaching I've done, Nobody makes it out of their childhood unscathed. Nobody makes it out unscathed, regardless of how great your childhood, regardless of how amazing your parents are and stuff. Do you see Keith's comments? Kathy, <laughs> especially good siblings. Yes. <laughs> That's, That's my right. <laughs> so, but here's the thing. So what we're covering today, like Mama Sita said, is the consequence. So what does an emotion, a child, what does an emotionally neglected kid look like as, boom, <laughs> as an adult? We're about to tell you two of the 10. Now, I will also tell you. <laughs> we have more than just two. Yeah. Yeah. We, we rather than make this a five hour video, yeah. we decided to just pick one each yeah. of, of uh, one of the areas. But again, I've got, I've got all kinds of awesome opportunities to grow my emotions, my emotional intelligence. We both do. And that's the good news. That is the good news is that. 
you you can heal this you can grow yeah. you can work through it and we don't care how old you are um, it's worthy you are worth it you are worth working on this you are worth growing you are worth healing you and, yeah, that's and you can do it like as a child you may not have been able like you can't do it there's certain things that you just don't know and aren't able to do for yourself as a child but you're not a child anymore you're an adult right and it's time to step up and do that and you know your family deserves it your family deserves a healed you your kids deserve a healed you your your spouse deserves a healed you. And if you're still young, your future deserves a healed you. You. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's right. That's exactly right. So, do you want to go first? Or you want to uh, go first? I was kind of wanting you to. Okay, I'll go first. <laughs> go ahead, dude. <laughs> Close your eyes. Go ahead. <laughs> People always ask. This is. Can I just tell you guys? Side note. This is the number one question that I get asked. Is is he always like this? <laughs> And the answer is yes, unless he's asleep. So he has two speeds. It's either all the way on or all the way off. That's right. Or unless he's kind of in a funk from all these issues that we're talking <laughs> about. Right. So maybe there's three speeds. So there's him totally on, there's him asleep, and then there's him in a funk. That's not a fun one. But <laughs> anyways, yes. Okay, so the one that I'm going to talk about today, because this was probably the way that the number one thing that I saw in myself, because I've seen other things, but the, the way that she calls it in the book is unrealistic self-appraisal. And what that basically boils down to is somebody who really is not able to see themselves objectively and therefore doesn't really know themselves. Um, for instance, it's people who have a very hard time describing themselves, saying what their strengths are, what they love to do. Some, I mean, how, how, how crazy is it that some of the questions I dislike the most is what are your favorite type questions? Like, what is your favorite kind of food? What is your favorite kind of mu music? What is your favorite movie? Like, I was always like, I don't know. I have no idea and who cares, right? That was kind of my whole approach to it. I have no idea and who cares? What does it matter anyways, right? And that may sound like, oh, that's all fine and dandy until you get to something like, well, what do you wanna do when you grow up, right? What kind of career do you wanna have? Where do you wanna live? All these other things. It wasn't just in small things, it was in big things. And you know, just to show you how disconnected um, I think I was from being able to see myself objectively, it wasn't until I was probably a senior in high school before I knew that my favorite color was yellow, right? I just, I remember that being a defining moment when I figured that out about myself. And you think, well, you should have known that when you were three or four. And maybe I did, maybe I said something, but it didn't connect with me. It didn't connect with me until I was really a senior in high school. And I thought, wow, is this what it's like to know me? and to know myself and to know you know who i am and what i'm good at um, there were even some things uh, some defining moments for me when other people saw me saw me and pointed out to me who i am and what i'm good at like for instance one was in high school where one of my teachers said hey kathy you should run for student body president you have great leadership potential and I was like, I do, I had no idea, right? I didn't, it wasn't something that I even recognized in myself or would have known about myself. Or had been affirmed in you. Yeah, or had been affirmed or, or anything like that. And so it was just like, oh my goodness, really? So here's, here are some things, some signs and signals of what it looks like, what it sounds like to have this unrealistic self appraisal or kind of this inability to know yourself, to know who you are. So number one, it's hard to identify your talents. So it's hard to look at yourself and say, this is what I'm great at, or this is what I'm not great at, um, right? It's very much, I don't know, second guessing and waiting for kind of outside input to know yourself. Uh, number two, you sense that you may need to overemphasize your weaknesses. Right, so it's when you do kind of get a feel for who you are, it's playing those down and not feeling like you can walk in those and live up to the strengths that you do have. Number three, I've already mentioned this one, it's hard to say what you like and what you dislike. And I'll tell you something I've started doing to kind of help me with that. Um, number four, you're not sure what your interests are, right? Again, what is your favorite? What do you like to do? I don't know, right? It's, it's kind of how that sounds. Uh, number five, you give up quickly when things get challenging. 
Number six, you choose the wrong career or have changed careers several times um, because you don't know yourself well enough to know, well, would I even like that career? Is that even something that I would enjoy? I'll never forget <laughs> having a conversation. I was in my mid-20s probably, and I was talking about a career option that I had been thinking of at some point earlier in my life with, um, with a friend. We were talking about it with a friend. And... And I made this comment, and the comment was so opposite of what that career choice would have been, and they pointed it out. They pointed out like, okay, well, you don't even like doing it, so why were you going, why were you even thinking that this would be a good idea for you? And I was like, oh my goodness, I don't know. I never thought of that. You're right, that would have been crazy, right? I just, there was just no connection between I don't even like this. Why am I even thinking that I would be, that I would want to do this or be even good at it, right? Um, okay, next, you often feel like a square peg in a round hole or a misfit, feeling like you're not at, in the right place in life for yourself. And then lastly, you're unsure what your parents think or what they thought of you. Again, not having any kind of ability to be self-aware or to self-assess kind of who you are and who other, how other people see you. So one of the things that I have started doing, um, and this might sound crazy, if this is not something that you struggle with, this is gonna sound absolutely crazy, but it's been really helpful, um, is I have started a list of things that I like and things that I don't like. And it's it was so fascinating when I first started this list, I was like, oh my gosh. Like it almost made me emotional because I thought, I, I actually have things that I like. I have things that I don't like. Like who would have thought because I just didn't know myself. And so as I go and as I discover, I pay, I've been paying attention. I've been paying attention to myself. Do I like this? Do I not like this? And I add it to my list. And it's been really good because it's helped m give me that ability to be self-aware and to self-appraise, you know, me um, outside of myself. So anyways, it's been fascinating. And it's also enabled me to be very aware of our daughter because I don't want to pass that on to her, right? And so really just paying attention and being aware. And as we notice things about her that she's really good at or that she seems to love, to just point it out, to help her have that self-awareness so that she will know who she is um, as, she, as she's growing up. So that was... That was <clears throat> That's great. And I'm going to share mine on, on the next episode. So I won't go into mine today, but I want to share a I principle. No, 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 no. It's, it's great. <laughs> is a principle is this, rules without relationship leads to rebellion. Rules mm -hmm. without relationship leads to rebellion. And <clears throat> it's a super important relationship concept uh, to, be, to be connected. And that's a, a question I'd ask you all is how connected do you feel to the people around you? How connected, how easy is it for you to connect, to truly connect? And, and, and do they feel connected to you as well? So you may say, oh yeah, I'm totally connecting. Do they feel that? How, you know, uh, does, do, do, are you, do you feel like you're connected to your spouse? Do your children feel connected to you? Are you connected to your coworkers or to the people that you lead? Uh, or if you're military that you command, that you're in charge of, how connected are you? Uh, because, you know, uh, yeah, anyway, that, that's just a, a critical, anyway, I just wanted to mention that. I'm gonna be discussing my, you know, a couple of my issues on the next episode. But if you're feeling like this is adding value to you, put hashtag I'm getting something. Hashtag I'm getting something from you know, you know, from these episodes. And again, I encourage you to check out the previous episodes on you know my Facebook page um, and also the 360 movement. I'm sharing uh, a lot of this content in, in the 360 movement Facebook group as well. But feel free, if you're getting value, tag friends. Uh, share share the links with with other you know with other circles and that kind of thing. If you feel like this is adding value to you, maybe somebody else would would. Uh, I, I just I tell you, I wish I learned this stuff when I was my right. kid's age. Yes, I, I wish I learned this stuff not <laughs> my age now. I'll tell you that much. Mm -hmm. uh, it's no joke. This this whole emotional journey is it, literally for me. It is learning a new language, like like Arabic or you know, like a, a language that I have no grid for, no file for, 
it's no, it's been no joke. It's not easy. It's, it's been, uh, and, and, I, and, and literally the other kind of surreal thing I shared this in one of the previous videos is that it's surreal because, um, like this is real time lesson. So this isn't like, Hey, we learned these lessons five years ago or 10 years ago. This is like today. This is like yeah. real time lesson. So, yeah. and just know, I think one of the reasons this is so powerful is because your emotions, your spirit being is the most real part of you, right? That is the most real part of us. And the, that's why it's so important to pay attention to it. That's why it's so important to um, to get to know it and to and to work on it and really give it attention. So. That's it. God bless you all. See you we'll see you episode. at the next episode.